Hello, good people. Welcome back to another episode of the God Pulse podcast. I'm your host, Bula Lomoela, and thank you again so much for allowing me into your space this morning, this afternoon, or even this evening. Thank you so much for allowing me to engage you once more. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Um, so as you can tell by the title of this episode, it's it's around the topic of loneliness. Um, and sometimes it gets lonely. And that's just the truth of it. I've been battling with um, this particular topic. I remember wanting to speak on something else. Like immediately after recording the previous episode, I was like, this is what I want to speak on. And it has to be, um, it has to be aligned with identity, you know, just directly. And I was like so set on doing it, but I just, I didn't feel it in my heart at all. And I was just like forcing myself and I just couldn't find it, you know. Um, and so what I was experiencing last week and especially throughout the weekend was just such intense feelings of loneliness. Oh, my goodness. And I mean, I wasn't trying to talk about that. <laughs> I wasn't trying to tell you that, hey, I'm feeling so lonely because um, it's so embarrassing and it's so hard to admit that. But it's what I was going through. And if there's anything that I guess I committed to myself um, before starting this podcast is that I would allow myself to be vulnerable with you and that I would be honest about the things that I am going through and not necessarily things that I've gone through. And so this is one of them which makes this really hard. It makes it really hard. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So... I mean, for those of you who may know me, who are in close proximity to my life, you know that I've been single for a while. Um, I, I guess a while is, is about almost three years, well, two years and a couple of months, three years in July, but who's counting? <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, but I've only recently been intentional about my singleness. And um, I think... I've I've generally felt lonely for for a great deal of time, um, particularly very recently before my mom passed away. But those feelings obviously intensified after she passed. Um, reason being, as I mentioned in the previous episode, my mom was really my bestie. She was my bestie, bestie, like my best bomba. And um, I think having my mom in my life um, fulfilled me so much. And I really had a real, I had a serious companion in my mom. And um, I think a lot of my friends can attest to the fact that when my mom was still alive, I, I guess I just didn't, I didn't really put much effort into the friendships I had. Um, and not not like intentionally. So I just, I was just really content with having my mom. You know, I was just like, man, I'm good. You know, um, and so the same almost two relationships as well. I just felt like, um, it'll come when it comes, but I don't really care for it. Um, I'm content with the companionship I, I have in my mother. It really fulfills me. It really leaves me feeling content, you know? So, um, I think after losing her, I had to really just look at those friendships again. And I realized that, um, I've had really great friendships <laughs> and I still do. And in terms of companionship, they do fulfill me to an extent. Um, and I guess what I'm going to get to, but I think I'm still working my way to it now, is that um, I started to look at relationships the way I used to look at relationships before. Um, that they were a means to fulfill me. And then I was kind of, placing these things and these people once more in the place of God, knowing fully well that God is the only thing that can fulfill me. Not to say that these things are particularly bad or that there's no place for these things, but I mean, for me personally, I had a general tendency of placing things and people in the place of God because I wasn't willing to just go in fully 
and just commit myself to being in a relationship with Jesus. And so, um, like I said, I've, I've been single for a while and I've been okay with it. I've been okay with it, though, if, if we're being honest, because I've had vibes here and there. You know, situationships is what we call them. <laughs> I've had situationships here and there, and I've had these situationships that I guess I've relied on to somewhat fill the void. And um, I guess feeding on the crumbs of this attention that I was getting and um, this companionship that I was getting. But knowing fully that I wanted more and knowing that I wasn't going to get it in those situationships or a relationship for that matter, that I was running away from the one thing that I have been running away from the one thing that, the only thing that can satisfy my soul. And I mean, I've always felt like something was missing. I'd break off relationships, I'd meet people, go on dates, and I just felt like something was missing. I could, I could really just be talking to someone who's, you know, if we think about people who take off the, the boxes in our heads. Think of someone like that, someone who takes off a whole lot of boxes and you're like, yeah, this, this, this should do it. But in your heart, you know that it's, it's not them. It's not the relationship, but you need something so much more and you're not going to find it in a person. And I mean, I think a lot about Matthew 6, 33, and how it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I know at every point when I'd feel myself kind of slipping into a place where I was relying on other things and I was looking for other things to fulfill me, whenever I'd kind of recenter myself and be like, okay, Shab Mudim, I'm going to seek you and I really want to walk in relationship with you, that I would feel so content at that point. And then something shiny and sparkly would distract me because I wasn't fully interested in investing myself completely in walking with Christ Jesus. And so, I mean, if you think of something with shallow roots, it's uprooted really quickly. And anything can kind of toss me this and that way because I wasn't really rooted in my relationship with God. And so... I started feeling particularly, I started feeling ways as soon as I committed to being intentional about my walk in being single. And that's when it happened. That's when I started to realize that, man, I feel lonely. I go out with friends. I sit and I pray, but this is this feeling of this intense loneliness that I can't shake. And I remember um, just these, these past couple of days, just going back and forth with myself, just going back and forth and really asking myself why I felt so, so hurt, you know, and so brokenhearted at this loneliness and I thought that you know maybe it's time for me to maybe Lord it's it's that time and you know and and the one thing the one thing that's just been laid on my heart throughout the whole course of the law of the past week and the weekend is that I'm running I'm still running why am I running why am I so afraid of giving God my heart and just fully committing it to him why don't I trust him with my heart? Why do I have this, this desire? Why am I so desperate to be in situations where I feel like I'm control? Why do I feel like I'm safer when I'm in control? When so many times in the past, I have seen how being in control doesn't mean I'll be safe. It doesn't equate to safety. I've seen that time and time again, and yet I still want to go back I want to go back and revisit old cycles, cycles that I know I 
truly don't have a desire for anymore. And I feel a great deal that God is calling me again to go deeper. And the thing is, I know what it feels like to be content in the Lord. I know what it feels like to take time out and be like, you know what? I'm just going to take some time out and just reconnect with my God and just really sit with him and talk with him. And I know what that contentment feels like, but it's been feeling, it's been how I feel and feeling contentment and not the the hard posture of being contentment and not my mind being content with knowing that all I all I'll ever want, all I'll ever desire, all I'll ever have a need for has always been and will always be found in God. I know that. So why is it so difficult for me to commit? Why do I want to go back and do the same old stuff when I know that there's something greater waiting for me? And so um, I kind of I kind of realized that I'm in a season of unlearning. And unlearning is so painful. There is nothing comfortable and gentle and cute about unlearning because unlearning comes with growing and growing is uncomfortable. Growing is painful at times because I feel at this point I'm being stretched. I have been kicked out of the driver's seat and all I have to do is just trust God. And that's the one thing that I know, or this is the one area in my life that I've just not trusted God with. I haven't trusted him with my heart. I haven't given him all of me. All I know is that I am so tired of compromising myself. And I got to a point a few months ago where I, I, was, I, was, I was just done. And I just didn't want to compromise myself anymore. And I kind of had to reconcile with the fact that the relationship, a relationship rather, is not what my heart is after. And that whether it comes or whether it doesn't, I will always have this problem. I will always have this issue. And it's a recurring thing. And the thing about, the thing that I've learned about relying on the world to fulfill your needs and to fill the voids that only God can fill is you develop such a a habit or a tendency rather of trusting in those things. And you develop a tendency to trust in those things so much so that when it's time for you to just trust in God and when you can't be in control and you can't see what's ahead and you just have to trust and have faith that whatever it is that he's doing will be for your good. That, that will throw you off. And that will make it easier for you to hold back. And so, do I feel tempted? Absolutely. Do I feel like calling up one of my exes like, yo, want to (laughs) hang? Absolutely. But I know what the real problem is and... Even when I'm tempted, I know that God will always provide a way out for me to stand. And I can stand up under that temptation. And I don't have to succumb to it. And so in a season like this, in a season where I feel so burdened by feelings of loneliness, what does it look like to trust God in this season? And what does it look like to just give him my heart and let go and let God, as they say. Personally, for me, practically, what it looks like, what it looks like is trusting him, learning to trust him every day, every morning when I wake up. And I feel like, man, I wish I was in a romantic relationship so that these feelings could go away. It looks like fighting those thoughts. Because I know that that's not the thing that needs to happen. It looks like reading his word 
and committing to getting to know him even more. It means be more faithful to having conversations with him, being in prayer, and not just talking to him, but listening to what he has to say to me. A lot of the times when I've actually committed to just having a conversation with God, man, he tells me some stuff that I don't really expect to hear. And he shows me areas of my life that I'm still withholding from him, that he wants to heal. And so it's been no different with this area. It looks like, per- <laughs> it looks like practically me playing some praise and worship music to kind of realign my focus to the thing that is a priority to me right now so that I know that even though I feel this way, I can't go back. I can't. And when I play some praise and worship, I know I'm just like, yo, okay, I'm feeling it. All right. Okay. God is great all the time. Okay, let's do this. I'm back. And that's what it looks like. Practically. Does it still break my heart? It does. Does it still bend me over and make me cry and wallow? It does because it's hard. It's difficult to come to a place of having to change from the way that you've been living for a really long time and just costing it all to God. It's still really difficult. And it's still really hard to admit it to myself at times. Um, Sometimes when I think about it, though, and I'm like, you know what? It is a desire that I have to be coupled with someone one day. You know, in my head, I'm like, you know what? Once I'm past this season (laughs) and I have really committed my heart to God. And I know that I know that I will. I know that that's what I am doing right now. And that's what I'm learning to do. That even when all that is done. And I still have this desire to be coupled with someone. Even then, may I still fully know and fully understand that I'll always have the Holy Spirit. That whether it comes, whether it doesn't, the Holy Spirit is still my comforter. He's still my counselor. He's still my friend. And that even if I'm in a season of having to wait Um, There's this scripture I came across, I think it was in January, right? And it was the first time because I was like, Lord, I'm waiting on so many things. I've asked you. And um, I remember just reading through 2 Peter and I got to chapter 3. And um, it was particularly in verse 9, you know, just after verse 8 where it talks about how um, a thousand days to God is like a day and a day to God is like a thousand years. And um, it says that the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And I kind of knew right there and then that God will not bring something to me in the wrong season if it's going to cause me to perish, if it's going to cause me to not walk in the light that he's so destined for me to walk in. And like how it says that he has made everything perfect in its time. And so even after all this, I don't know when that will be. And I'm not particularly trying to push forward to that time. But when that time comes, I will know that whatever good work he has started, that he has established in me, he will see it to finish. He will carry it to completion. And for now, because greater is he that is within me, I can be content because he teaches me how to be content in every situation, in every circumstance. I can learn to be content, even in a situation or a season of waiting, a season of wanting. I can still have a hot posture of contentment and be set in my mind that I'm okay with or without the thing that I thought I needed or the thing that I desire. And so with me, the thing that I've always decided is a romantic relationship, but I don't want it. I don't want it if I can't have God be the be all and end all for my life. And that's where I'm focused. But if you are desiring something from God, 
and you've been in a season of waiting, know that he's not slow in keeping his promise. And if you do feel a little lonely, know that it's okay to lean on God, to not look to external things to fill that void in your heart. Only Jesus can fill it. Only relationship with God, companionship with the Holy Spirit will ever fill that part in you. And so even if, like me, you've been left brokenhearted over the situation that you're in, you just feel like, man, I've been alone for too long. I'm not getting the thing that I want. I've wanted a child for so long. I've wanted a wife, a husband, a boyfriend, a girlfriend for so long. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Be interested in God. Be interested in learning about him. Not only about what he has to say about you, but his character, the kind of God that he is, the kind of person he is, the kind of father he is, the kind of friend he is. Get interested in being in real relationship with God. And I know that you will no longer long for the things that will not fill you. But in the right time, in the right time when you're in that season of waiting, he will make everything beautiful in its own time. And so um, even after you've listened to this, (laughs) know that I'm in that season of unlearning, of being stretched, of discomfort, of brokenheartedness, of pain, of doubt. But I know that my fulfillment lies only in God. And that even though it is sometimes embarrassing to admit and tough to go through, I'm going to go through it and I'm going to be okay. And if you ever find yourself in the same situation, you'll be okay too. I love you. God loves you. Heaven is rooting for you. Whatever it is that you're going through, you'll be okay. Until next time, I love you.